lesson, uh, we're going to explore one of the very important items in the annual report, or specifically in the uh, comprehensive income statements and also um, statement of financial position. Right? Why we have to learn inventory? Because it, it has a lot of effect on the um, on the bottom line, yeah, on the income statement. Because if you refer to on how we calculate, how we determine the net income, is basically the difference between revenue and expenditure. So if you go in detail, what constitutes revenue is basically revenue, or sometimes a uh, company call it turnover, all right? And then it minus the gross profit, and from the gross profit, it minus or it deduct all the expenditure to get the net income, all right? So uh, we're going to begin uh, with this one as usual, yeah, the learning outcome. Uh, basically, the outcome of this lesson is firstly to differentiate uh, between merchandising company, services company, and also manufacturing company. Because outside there, these are the uh, typical uh, uh, categories of industry or company that really exists. And in the uh, uh, secondly, we're going to also evaluate an uh, inventory system. Um, as you are aware from your reading, a uh, company may opt, may have the choice to choose perpetual or periodic accounting or uh, inventory uh, system. Yeah? And then, uh, thirdly, we're going to uh, discuss on how we can record uh, inventory uh, start from its purchase until we close the account to the uh, comprehensive income statement. And after that, we're going to also discuss on what are the methods that are available uh, for company to, to determine the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold. Um, again, a uh, company uh, have uh, choices, they have options to choose uh, which method that they would prefer. And, um, and, and also, we're going to see what are the common justification used by the company when they decide on which method to choose. And these are the contents that, uh, that we're going to cover basically in this one or two hours uh, session. Yeah. Um, different type of companies, inventory system, on accounting for purchase, and also a uh, costing, uh, costing method. Um, I would like to acknowledge that uh, most of this slide uh, are taken from various uh, sources. Um, Mainly, um, Hekka et al. Yeah, uh, published uh, by Prentice Hall, uh, Macro Hill, or oh, and 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 also Hongren, which is Hongren et al. Uh, published by Pearson, and also some other uh, publication um, as as we as we use for this particular <coughs> class. Yeah, so. Let me begin by this industry or this uh, sector of business. Um, Service-based company. Um, again, and we have different type of companies. Manufacturing companies, merchandising companies, and also service-based companies. What? What is basically so unique about each of each each one of them? For service company, the the significant difference 
be doing service company and merchandising and also manufacturing is service companies don't deal with what? Inventory stuff, yeah? Uh, because uh, they do deal with uh, inventory, but not inventory something that they use to to resell or sell it back to the customer. They may use inventory, for example, suppliers, for example, for their own consumption, for their own uh, daily daily operation. Yeah, but not for resale. Yeah, but not for resale to the uh, to the customer. So service organization basically render services. Yeah, service based organization render services. Yeah, render services and basically they are they are earning. They earn by selling services or selling time. Why we call, why we why we say sell time? Because normally the revenue are basically based on the amount of time to render the services. For example, that if they spend um, 10 hours of advising or consultancy, for example, so normally they are earning, they earn from, uh, from the rate, yeah? from the rate multiplied by the numbers of hours that exist. Same goes, I mean, these are the examples of service organization, accounting firm, law firm, or even some of the plumbing or construction. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the uh, uh, financial statement, especially comprehensive income statement, you will find the yeah, statement is quite simple. Um, in a sense that they don't have that inventory. They strip with the I mean, what um, their approach to determine net income is basically the difference between revenue and expenditure. Yeah? Okay, how about merchandising company? Again, okay. merchandising company are company that normally obtain they are goods, yeah, normally finished good from the supplier, either from the manufacturer or from the wholesaler and resale or redistribute this product to the to the customer. Yeah? So they are they are dealing with, with finished good. Yeah, they are dealing with finished good. They obtain from the supplier, maybe from the manufacturer directly, or maybe from the wholesaler, and sell it, okay, and resell it to that, I mean, to a uh, to customer. And these are the typical in comprehensive income statement that you will see for this nature of company. Yeah, um, you have this cost of goods sold. Yeah, cost of goods sold. Yeah. As in a service-based organization, you don't have this, right? You just have, for example, revenue multiplied, I mean, a minus operating expenses, then you get the net income. Yeah. So the issue now is that the issue that we are dealing in this lesson is basically on how to determine the cost of goods sold, or sometimes call, we call it cost of sale. Basically, how we determine the cost of goods sold is basically, you may use this yeah, as a formula to determine the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is basically, of course, yeah, the, the the cost of the product, yeah? the cost of the product uh, which you sell to the customer. Okay, the cost, yeah? The cost means that the original cost, not the selling price. The original cost that you purchase from the suppliers or from the wholesaler or the manufacturer. The cost that you pay, yeah? the cost that you pay 
to acquire to purchase the goods the product yeah not the selling price yeah? not the selling price so how we determine this this is basically the formula yeah? the formula we start from the beginning inventory and then we add to the purchases that we made during that period and then the total of this is basically the total of goods the total of goods available for sale total of goods available for sale and then from the total available for sale we minus any inventory what is ending inventory ending inventory is basically the amount of good that you have purchased or you brought forward from the previous um, accounting period okay and you cannot sell that you cannot sell the good in that particular period yeah so that's basically the ending inventory okay amount that you have okay amount that you have um, or amount that available um, at the end of the of of the year where something that you did not manage to sell yeah? so this basically what we can get i mean this is how the formula we determine the cost of goods so yeah? okay now the issue is that how we shall we determine the the inventory how shall we determine the inventory um, cost to determine the inventory is basically you have to take into you have to take into consideration of all expenditure that incur that you have you as a buyer have to pay to the seller or the supplier okay which include everything okay uh, which may include for example insurance that you need to pay for example to cover the you know, to uh, to cover the, the I mean uh, any uh, any accidents or any uh, any things happen yeah uh, 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 when the goods are delivered or maybe you have to pay for storage you know, for fry and so on so the in, the the inventory cost is basically the invoice cost which have which have taken into consideration of all this okay even you also have to minus if you are granted any discounts or allowance uh, when you when you purchase it all right so normally normally company will do some uh, inventory checking okay uh, from time to time uh, just to ensure that there is a match there is a tally figure between what is appear on the on record or on the sheet and also okay um, the amount that are available in the in, in the stock in the uh, stores yeah, in the um, um, in the warehouse okay and if happened that there is a mismatch for example so they have to find out what happened to the missing goal okay what happened to them you know either they are broken damaged or maybe they are stolen for example so if that happened you have to record those and consider those as the expenditure yeah. okay company may use two system to record or to manage their inventory one system is what we call the perpetual and the other is the periodic yeah? periodic um, system yeah? so let me start with the periodic first. Um, long, long time ago, okay. In fact, during 
during my time, you know, learning, learn, uh, learning accounting, maybe periodic is one of the methods, I mean, available during, during that time. Because why? In 30 years back, maybe we, don't, we did not have the computerized uh, system that, that can help business to manage their inventory. Um, what we used to do is that uh, at the end of the year, at the end of the year, we go to our warehouse and counting uh, and start counting how many goods they are available unsold. So we have to check you know, one, one by the one. For example, if we have 100 items, we have to go item by item and see what are the items that, that, that which is still unsold. And we record that. And also, um, and from there, we go to the, um, okay, once we get the amount of good which is unsold, for example, we put that on record. And then we go back to our record, okay? We go back to our record and start looking at what? So that means, yeah, to help you, let me go back to our computers now, yeah? To, because at the end of the day, you want to determine this. You want to determine cost of goods sold. For all the items that available, there are that exist in the, in, the, in the comprehensive income statement, these are something that you can refer to your previous transaction and the record that you have done, okay? For others, revenue and expenditure. But for this one, you can't do that. To determine the cost of goods sold, in, you need to do some extra effort, some extra work because of the formula, because of the formula, okay? For this one, you may use the you may use the previous balance sheet or statement of uh, financial position. Because why? If you look into the statement of financial I mean, position, is small compared to balance sheet. Balance sheet is easier to measure. Yeah, to say. Okay, if you go to balance sheet, yeah, if if you go to balance sheet you will find this beginning inventory. So beginning inventory is basically the ending inventory in the balance sheet for last year. So you can get inventory, beginning inventory. How about purchases? Yes, because you must have recorded all the purchases done by the company. And from there, you can get the total goods available for sale. But the issue now is that how are you going to determine the ending inventory? So this is how we did, you know, 30 years back, where when, when we want to determine, we, when we want to, I mean, determine the, the ending inventory, we have to go to the warehouse and start counting, for example, the number of goods, yeah? the number of goods that are available and so, And from there, we can determine the, ending inventory. Then we enter the ending inventory to get the cost of the Right? So you can really imagine how we work 20 or 30 years back. Right? Just try to imagine if, if you go to the sundry shop, you know, and try to determine, for example, you know, because you, you have to do it. You have to do it normally in the last day of the accounting period. Okay, let's say normally 31st of December, okay? During your New Year Eve, okay? During your New Year Eve, you have to go to the, your warehouse and start counting, you know? Because you want to determine the volume, you know, the, the amount of good and so. So that means you have to calculate, you have to add up. Or, and then after getting the figure, then you can already develop and you can enjoy the the new year. Until and unless you don't get that, I mean, it's basically you can't operate tomorrow because tomorrow is another another accounting period and you have to start everything from from zero, okay, from zero. So I know that you can't imagine how we work in 30, 30 years back, but now everything is easy. Because why? 
Yes, even the sundry shop, if you go outside our campus, you will see even the how, how small the sundry shop is, they are using the computerized accounting system. So in that sense, <laughs> New Year's Eve is no it's just like I mean ordinary day. Yeah? Um, uh, perhaps maybe, you know, maybe you want to have a check, for example, just to ensure that the goods are there. Because next, nothing went missing, nothing damaged, and so on. Okay, so that's basically the thing that you have to do. Okay, so if everything is okay, everything is in order, everything is there on the shelf, on the rack, for example. So in that sense, you can you can use that ending inventory and that published by the computerized accounting system, and there you go. You can prepare the the income statement, right? Okay. But life is not that easy again. Because why? Because we are given choices. We are given some freedom to choose how to determine the again, yeah? how to determine this one. Especially this one. Yeah? Sorry. Yeah. This one, how to determine the, the cost of goods. So, because what? Because the cost of that good is basically, okay, common sense, common sense tell that how you're going to determine the cost? For example, that you sell that good for, for 10 ringgit, for example. So how are you going to de determine the cost of that 10 ringgit? goods Based, yeah yeah from the from the from the cost from the cost that you you purchase you purchase the good okay but the freedom that the company have of the option that the company has is that they can choose which figure to use yeah company have choice to choose which, which figure that they want. For example that, yeah, um, if, if you use, for example, this uh, method, yeah, inventory method or uh, costing method, yeah, if you use a costing method of 54 for example yeah first in first out you will get a different figure okay you will get a different figure for cost of goods sold in comparison with if the company is using lifo weighted average or specific identity so so company have at least three choice. Yeah, they have three choices or option to choose from. Okay, that make the life of the accountant is a bit challenging. Right. So later on, we're going to see how we can determine the cost of goods sold by each method. Because again, um, you may be working, for example, in a company where the company or the board of directors decided to use which one? Maybe this one. Maybe weighted average. Yeah. Maybe maybe five four. Yeah. But not life four. Yeah. Life four. We just discuss for the sake of discussion because why? Life four is not a gap. It's not a gap. Uh, compliance. Yeah. Just like the, the, the accrual and cash basis, okay? Cash basis is not a gap compliance. Same goes to the accounting standard. So company cannot use LIFO, last in, first half. Company may, or, may only choose this one, this one, or this one. Not, not LIFO. We're going to see after this why, I think why the regulator, yeah? The, or the accounting standard sector uh, decided on that, on that 
position. Yeah. Okay. So again, different company are given uh, several method to choose from, and they are given, of, of course, and so you as a analyst, you as a financial information user, you have to know each method. Okay, you have to know each method because different method will tell a basically a different story to that particular company. Okay? Uh, okay, so that means you as an interpreter, you as an analyst, you should be aware of different methods that are available. Okay, so uh, we cover periodic just now, yeah, but even though we did not discuss in detail what is perpetual means, perpetual is basically the, the reverse of it. Perpetual means that you don't have to wait, you don't have to wait until, until the year end, then only you determine the ending inventory. Perpetual means that continuous, okay? You, you update, you update your record on the continuous basis. Every transaction happened, for example, it automatically shown on the, on record, yeah? For example, that, um, you know, you can really tell uh, what is basically the amount should be appear in the, in the, in the ending, ending inventory, yeah? Because um, if you, if you record, okay? If you record every purchases, if you record any sales, definitely you can really tell what is the ending inventory at one particular time. Okay? Right? Yeah? So, in terms of frequency, okay? In terms of frequency, this is the data used uh, taken in the United States, where in the United States you are still given the option, okay? To use to use LIFO, yeah. So still, uh, so this are uh, this is the environment. This is the statistic in uh, in the market where company are given uh, at least you know uh, two or three types of uh, of inventory method to choose to choose from. Right. So FIFO is one of the most popular one. Right. Okay, we're going to discuss one after the others. Right? So first in, first out of FIFO. FIFO is basically a very close to, uh, to a natural system, yeah? Where if we have a goods here, if, if we have a range of goods, this is delivered in 1st of January, this is delivered in 5th of February, and this is on 3rd of March, for example, and this is 4th of May. So if you are using the first in, first out, actually you are, okay, when you sell, when you sell the product, which one you take first? Which one? Yeah, this one will go first. And then follow by this. Yeah? So, if we follow this method, so basically when we don't want to determine the cost of sales, the cost of goods sold, the cost is at the purchase of this, of this time. So when you want to when you want to determine the, the cost of goods sold, so the cost is basically the cost that you purchase the product at that particular time. Yeah. Even though it's not important, but for the sake of learning, life four is the the other way around. Okay. This one come will sell first. Right. So if, if all the products are here, are available here, right? 
So when the customer come and ask for this good, for example, so you will take this one first. And the cost for the cost of goods sold is based on the amount that you pay on this particular day or for this particular product on this particular on this particular day. Right? So that's why that's why I think the reason why Malaysia and many other countries, for example, pro, I mean prohibits or did not or don't allow company to use life for because I think it's again I think it's again this um, natural natural process. Um, okay, even though okay, even though uh, this is what we should do right we shouldn't do this but always human is always the game in nature okay right in practical which one you want to choose first you this you one yeah you. unless you control it you know control it don't touch it now make sure that you take this one first but in in reality people will take this one first yeah. so i think that what might be the reason why uh, the accounting standard for being this from uh, you know, uh, from using this one just to ensure just to ensure that they are using they are using this uh, this uh, price, yeah. okay um, how about weighted average yeah, weighted average is, is much fairer it seems fairer because it take the the average of this for example, this is 10 ringgit, 12 ringgit, 13, 14, and they got the average of that, maybe 12 or 15, 13 ringgit to determine the cost of goods sold. So that's basically how different uh, costing method would produce a different, different figure. Let us go slowly, okay, using this illustration and how different method will produce a different uh, cost of goods so we take the example here let's say that the accounting period is for one month okay for august these are the list of transactions that occur in august okay with regard to the purchases right? which include the beginning inventory beginning inventory this beginning inventory this is the inventory that brought forward from from last year yeah? from from last month okay from last month to this month yeah and also these are the this these are the purchases have been done for that particular month and these are the sales okay incurred right or happened in that particular month as well okay so before we really go in, in, in detail for example just want to test you okay but, uh, so if the company is using 54 for example using 54 so how are you going to determine the cost of goods sold for this one for the first 20 unit 54 first in first out first in first out so you don't base the cost of goods sold from this one, yeah? Because it's the selling price. You have to base the cost of goods sold based on the purchase price, yeah? The amount that the company paid to purchase the goods. So that means to determine the cost of goods sold, you have to take the unit, yeah? 20, multiply by the 91. Because again, first in, first out, yeah? First in, first out because you you sell or you take the from the oldest yeah? from the oldest from the earliest uh, stock yeah so one is finished then you go to the next one and then another 10 from from here yeah another 10 from here so 10 multiplied by one or six how about the next one so the cost of goods sold will again will take a five from here yeah take five from here and then take another 20 take another 
18 yeah 18 from here for using this price and you get the cost of the soap that is first in first out if you are using LIFO again for the sake of learning you're using a LIFO so another other way around so that means if you are selling 20 units so that means coming from one 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 nine yeah ten from one one nine and another ten from one one five good yeah so how about if using average let the computer do it <laughs> because why the, just ask the computer to take the average of this okay and the computer will even though this one also just if you use a computer accounting system just select for example use life 4 or 5 4 so if you ask the computer to use 5 4 for example so they will do it for you okay they will based on this one so but again you as a financial statement analyst you must be able to know <coughs> the difference between this because again different methods will produce a different a different figure yes uh, how to calculate the average this and uh, how to do yeah manually you have to calculate the amount that available on that particular time for example that for this one for this one 20 units okay 20 units so you have to take the average of this one okay the average of this okay and and get and 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 you get the cost okay for one unit for one unit okay because this one oh sorry i'm wrong you have to see the day you have to see the we have, we have to see the date, yeah? The date is August 14. So that means if you if you are selling on August 14, you have to check. Okay, you have to check, for example, on August 14, what are the total amount of goods available for sale? So you have to take only this one. And take the average. Okay? So that means the average of goods average cost of good available for sale okay all right so so in the on 30 on 31st august for example all right 31st august you again you only take into consideration the amount of good available for sale again so that means you have to minus the 30 then 20 right so you have to minus the 20 which is coming from coming from this one and also my half of I mean half ten of this so that means available for sale is 35 is it correct yeah 35 so you take the average of 35 so you take the average of 35 then you use that price to determine the cost of goods sold all right other than the 5 and life four, the most we call it ideal method is this one specific identification specific identification is basically um, you can determine the cost of that unit individually individually that's why not many company may use this method because this method requires the company um, to know the exact cost, yeah, the exact cost for that particular inventory. Because the most that's why this method is most popular for the inventory which is um, big enough to manage or much easier to identify so it may be um, one I mean one one uh, one way to do it is if the products are basically big in size you can easily identify 
Um, that's why, for example, if the items are small, you know, it's very difficult for you to identify, for example, um, you know, this, how much the product for one pen, for example, how much the price for one pen, for example, is, I think that one is, is very challenging for you to use this specific identification. So this only works if you can know, for example, for this particular one. That's why the most famous, like, for example, that cars, you know, machine, big machine, truck, lorry, and something that big. Sorry? Imported good depends. Depends on the nature of the good. If imported car, yes. That imported machine. But uh, if, it, if, if that good coming in bulk, for example, we don't use that. We, we don't use that. So it is normally for product that have come individually and a price tag. Okay, the price is tag individually. Okay, so this is uh, that's why I say this is the most ideal method because you can really know, for example, the actual the actual cost uh, for that particular for that particular. 